guys welcome back to a, another video now for those of you who may or may not know i have a slight obsession with five nights at freddy's now hear me out i have never played a fnaf game fnaf is short for five nights at freddy's for those of you un unaware and you're just clicking to support me and watch my content but maybe if you are new here and you just want a, a hot take on fnaf You've come to the right place because boy, do I have a lot of opinions. But yeah, so I've never watched a, or I've never played a FNAF game. However, I know all the theories. I watch all the theories. I've read the books. Um, I'm not caught up on the Pizza Plex or I think there's a few Fazbear Frights that I hadn't read, but I'd read like the main uh, Silver Eyes trilogy. And I just think FNAF is so. So interesting because there is so much lore there and there is so much unanswered and empty spots in the lore that there is a lot of theories and you know there is no concise timeline and you just have to take your best guess and um, and throw it at the wall and see what happens and so I think that's why I really enjoy it is because I think it's just so fascinating and um, yeah, I, I just really enjoy FNAF. <laughs> so, I was really excited to see that they were finally coming out with a FNAF movie. Um, I did not go to the theaters. I did watch it at home on Peacock um, late the Thursday night that it released. Um, so, I was pretty excited that not only could I watch it like a day early, but I could watch it in the comfort of my own couch. I saw a lot of videos going around of how crazy and chaotic it was. I know that FNAF normally has a younger fan base. Um, so I think there would have been a lot of screaming children there, which I'm going to be completely honest, there's no way I would have been able to tolerate or handle. And so, yeah, I got, I was very comfortable sitting at home and watching it in my own time and being able to pause it if I needed to get up and take care of the dogs or use the restroom. Um, but I had very strong feelings after watching it and I knew I wanted to make a video, but... I rewatched it. Yes, I've already watched it twice. And um, I've been taking notes as I was rewatching it because I didn't want to forget anything. And uh, now my thoughts are not in a well organized manner. A lot of the time, as I was watching the movie, I was taking notes as they came to mind so I wouldn't forget. Um, in case, like, when the time came later that these comments or opinions were relevant. Um, in case I forgot, I didn't want to. Um, so, I apologize if uh, this is a chaotic mess. Um, I do want to say flashing red lights, beeping noises, alarms, all the things. Spoilers ahead. All the spoilers. Tons of spoilers. <laughs> I'm going to talk about all of them. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the games, that's okay. Um, in a sense, I will try to touch on anything that's I feel like important um, lore wise from the games um, versus what's going on in the movie um, I do feel like going into this movie you have to have some type of understanding of FNAF um, I don't think that this movie's for everybody um, on Rotten Tomatoes the film critics gave it a 25 Normally, I feel like Rotten Tomatoes already is going to give it a lower rating anyways because I don't feel like they like horror movies as much, so automatically it's going to be a lower score. However, the fans have rated it a 89. I disagree. Um, I personally would not rate it a 89, but, you know, the people have spoken and had their own opinions. And I will never say that they are wrong or disagree. I'm just saying I feel very differently. And uh, I'll tell you why as we go through. So we're going to start from the beginning. My first comment, because some of these are just comments, let's be honest. They're not uh, full reactions per se, is um, why in the fuck is there a saw trap in, in the opening sequence of this movie? Why? Um... None, no book, now I could be wrong because again, I have, I'm not caught up, but from no book or like even a theory that I've heard of has any contraptions 
that have something along those lines that's clearly not a spring traps mask um what in the saw is going on and uh, they're being locked down and again you know i did just do my review of saw 10 i i did a ranking of all the saw movies so you know saw's a little fresh in my mind and be honest but he was literally strapped down and had to basically show his will to live by finding a way out um and so that ah uh, that was just now i did appreciate all the easter eggs for any true diehard fans um there are easter eggs galore in here and i thought that was really cool and such a really nice touch um obviously scott coffin the creator of the games and books and, and franchise um had a lot of say and from what i have heard and read they he um he's uh he was on set kind of helping and making comments here and there pretty continuously uh throughout the entire film um and everything now i did think it was confusing at from a lore standpoint where now okay <laughs> I understand not everything could be explained or shown in this film because they had already planned on making a trilogy. Now I didn't think that this film was going to be a one-to-one -to, -one to like FNAF 1 and so it was kind of interesting to see that it had, you know, I would almost say up to FNAF 1 to 4 aspects mixed in with obviously holes and gaps. So I did think that it was interesting that he decided to kill, because you know, spoiler for the end of the movie we're, we're gonna work our way there but it's come to find out that William Afton is the one behind um making the robots do what they're doing or sorry William Afton is making the animatronics do what they are doing right um he's the one controlling them it's not just the spirits themselves um so why if he in the games only killed children for the remnant and experimentation and all that type of shit. Why is he now deciding to have adults die? Um, I believe... God, it's been a long time since I've read the Silver Eyes trilogy. But I believe maybe in the books, like if someone broke in, something happened, I don't completely remember. Um, but... I don't know, it just, it felt weird. I did appreciate the intro with the, like, very minigame-esque, um, animations and the glitches and such. Um, I did think it was really funny that, you know, conveniently, Mike is Mike Schmidt from FNAF 1. Now, something that did catch my attention is the career counselor, he didn't even say Schmidt completely, he said Mike Schm and then cut off, which makes me feel like he knows that name and that's what made him so interested in Mike and kind of wanted Mike to take this position so strongly. So that was very interesting to me. Um... Also, again, not all these thoughts are in chronological order of the, uh, of the movie, so I apologize. My thoughts are kind of all over the place. Um, I did think that, you know, with Mike having the 6 a.m. alarm and the Dream Theory book, again, kind of goes, you know, 6 a.m. obviously makes sense, but then the Dream Theory book plays into FNAF 4 and kind of, a, to me, was also a, a little pun at... How FNAF 4 at one point in time was going to be a was going to be the a dream, um, but then because he redconned it because he continued the series. Um, my qu first question that I had is, how does w William Afton know where Garrett was to kidnap him? Because you, if we think about it. Like, if we look at the games, they all happened at the pizzeria, right? And all these murders from the spirits from the 8-bit intro of the movie showed it all happening at the pizzeria. So why then did he target Garrett 
only kidnapped one kid. It didn't even hurt him, just kidnapped him from a campsite. I'll get into a theory that I have with that later. My next comment I have wrote down is, why is Kate crying over a rando that Mike punched? I understand why he attacked the guy. I wish he maybe would have had a conversation with him, but obviously that wouldn't have matched up with the storyline and the movie and everything. But why is she sobbing over some random guy? It'd be different if like that was her friend or her husband or, you know, some type of connection. But the dramatics of that bitch. Um... And then she says that uh, she has, she's special or has a mental disability or whatever, however she worded it about Abby. I think that kids coloring and having imaginary friends isn't abnormal. I, you know, it's kid shit, right? Like, I don't think that's weird. So for the aunt to immediately go to that and keep in mind, I feel like this movie took, takes place in like the 2000s based off of like the fact that they have like cell phones like there's the razor and the like the little nokia um i had i had that little nokia and uh tons of my friends had the little razors so i feel like that happens in like the early 2000s so i mean <laughs> i i don't feel like kids were labeled as like you know autistic or on the spectrum back then nearly as much as like you know everyone is welcomed now and it's discussed more now um and so for her to uh, to say something like that just feels out of character and weird um i mean i get they have to talk about the coloring multiple times throughout the movie to conclude and show how they're gonna win i get it foreshadowing blah blah whatever um the other thing is is if william kidnapped Garrett it, they, it, it's not like he would have drove states to go kidnap a single child right it had would have ha had to have happened I feel like okay I've listened to a lot of serial killer podcasts and I know that a lot of serial killers would drive like up and down the interstate and find victims and kill them and then you know live like an hour or two away so let's use that as a decent baseline right let's say hypothetically William did drive two hours to kidnap Garrett. If you're two hours, you're either in a bordering state or within the same state. I feel like that's fair judgment. How would Mike not know about Freddy's or the kids that were murdered at Freddy's? Okay. When Garrett was kidnapped, Mike was 12. So, like, he would have heard that type of shit around him whether it be the news or his parents talking about it or kids talking about it at school or something somewhere he wasn't like five years old um and they didn't like live states away from where it happened and even if they did live states away hypothetically which i don't believe happened and is the case i feel like it would have been on national news i i don't know the other thing that I noticed is Abby was drawing pictures of her and her imaginary friends slash the dead kid spirits before he even took the job. So the fact that they were already attaching themselves onto her and like showing up and talking to her and stuff was very weird. I could see it happening once Mike took the, took the job or once, um, you know, he, he took Abby there for the first time. But the fact that the kids, she was drawing those kids already is just bizarre to me. Um, this is a repeat thought. I said, William killed adults with animatronics. Yeah, again, it goes back to the, he, I don't remember him ever doing that. I know in the book, he put one of the, like, kids from the friend group, um, they were like teenagers, put the teenager in a spring trap suit um but again i don't know it the math ain't mathing for me um you know of course a really good foreshadow the job counselor is wearing purple ties and also is the phone guy um i thought that was kind of a, a nice little hint hint not nudge nudge as if we didn't already fucking know um also mike 
if you need this job so desperately bad to keep custody of your sister so that you don't get your sister taken away by your aunt, why in the fuck are you sleeping on the job? Why are you sleeping on the job? That just seems so silly. I get it, you're tired. Haven't changed your sleep schedule. You're still obsessed with finding your brother's murderer. Um, but like, come on, dude. Um, during the first night, one of the comments I made was, saw clock on the wall. Um, again, saw's pretty fresh in my mind, but that clock that they like clipped to that is on like an old beat down wall looks like a saw clock to me. Um, so I did make that comment. Um, also, I understand we get a little glimpse of Golden Freddy, just a little, little nugget of Golden Freddy. Um, he's not primarily throughout the entire game, but, like, is nobody going to acknowledge that there were five kid spirits, but only four animatronics? Again, the math ain't mathin'. Um, obviously, Abby has seen Golden Freddy, but she only calls him Freddy. She doesn't even acknowledge that Freddy looks different. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of odd that that wasn't acknowledged at all. I'm going to pass this comment because I have a lot of opinions on this one. We'll come back to it. Um, what in the nightmare on Elm Street? The fact that anything that happens in his dreams then happens to him in real life with like the cutting and the stabbing and stuff from the kids in the dreams and then that animatronics actually did it to him. Very Nightmare on Elm Street. Don't get me wrong, Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my favorite horror movies, so I did appreciate that, but also, I don't know, it just felt out of character, I guess. Um, the other thing that immediately made me think is I love the Scream franchise, so I personally see William Afton um, as Stu from Scream versus Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Just, that's how I see Matthew, um... Hillard, am I pronouncing his name wrong? Probably pronouncing that wrong. If I'm not, kudos to me. If I am, I apologize. Um, but yeah, so, and then also him wiping the knife, very satisfying of what he did and saw. Just those little small throwbacks and Easter eggs I, I really like. Um, no one's going like, to talk about or acknowledge the It's Me written on the mirror I get it, it's another Easter egg and stuff, but like, unless we find out in like the next movie that Garrett's spirit is also in Golden Freddy with the blonde child, it wouldn't make any fucking sense of why it says it's me on the mirror. Because that doesn't seem like it should be an Easter egg that exists in the movies. So I'm very curious. Um, again, I make a comment about how did he not know about the murders? Now, this is one that uh, I didn't see upon first watch, but I have acknowledged it upon the second, is um, if Mike was 12 in the 80s, let's say worst case scenario, this happened, like the kidnapping happened in 89, right? At the very end of the 80s, um... You know, I would assume it should happen between 83 and 87 just because, like, you know, the missing children as incident in the in the game happens in 85. Um, but then we have the bite of 83. And I can't remember what happened in 87. Uh, but for some reason, that number is stuck in my head. So I feel like it's something. Comment down below what it is or if I'm just losing my mind. Um, but if he was 12 and 89, again, we're going, you know, keep him as young as possible. It's, it's now the 2000s, right? At worst, it's been what? So let's say it's the year 2000. We're going to say he was 12 in 89 and it's year 2000, which I don't think razors existed in 2000. But again, I don't quote me. I'm not going to Google it. I honestly can't be that bothered. But let's say worst case scenario, it's been 11 years since the, the kidnapping. If we take 11 plus 12, because he would have been 12, that would put him at 23. At youngest, right? At oldest, let's say that he was 12 and 80, and let's say that this movie takes place in like 05, right? 
It's been 25 years. 25 plus 12 would put him at 37. I don't think he's 37 in this, but, you know, worst case scenario. So if he's 37 or, you know, in his early 30s, late 20s maybe, his parents would have had to stay together for a while and continue to raise him, and he potentially could have graduated high school and had been moved out before Abby was even born. Potentially. So, I feel like maybe they should have given him some more background of like, you know, um, after my mom died, my dad couldn't handle it, I had to move back in or or something along those lines of, of to take care of Abby. Um, I just feel like the way that they left it with, yeah, I had to take care of her. Okay, well, like, we need to know more details of how old were you when she was born? Um, how old are you now? Did you ever move out and go to college? Have you, like, given up your entire life for this child? Because now you have all these, like, random miscellaneous jobs that you can't keep, but yet, you know, you did you have a chance to go to college? Like, you know, give us some more details of that, because I think that's very... Eh. Um, when the babysitter, Max, gets uh, cut in half by the animatronic, I'm sorry, but if they broke in, and it had to have been early in the morning, because he gets off work at 6 and leaves, right? So even, let's say, it's been an hour, 7 a.m., and they're breaking in to destroy the thing. And they, the kid already hears all the banging and knocking around of everyone else destroying the pizzeria. She's not going to be like, why is there this random child at 7 a.m. in this abandoned pizza comp pizza plex or pizza pizzeria? Let me go follow him. I'm sorry, but that's a hard no from me. <laughs> um, yeah, again, and then I talk about the age of Abby versus Mike. Um, I feel like... Vanessa should know as a cop if the door was still locked when the break-in happened. Like, you could literally just look and see that it's still locked before the break-in. So, again, doesn't really make sense. And then this is something that I found interesting upon second watch, is when Abby stays at the, the pizzeria the first night and goes to play with the animatronics, uh, only Golden Freddy, or who we are presumed to be Golden Freddy, the the blonde child, is in the dream with Mike because all the other spirits have gone back to their animatronics to go play with Abby. I thought that was very fascinating. Now, the biggest thing that I would like to talk about, the one that has perplexed me the most. So, for those of you who have not read the, the Silver Eyes trilogy, I get it, not everybody likes the books, not everybody believes that they are helpful to the lore of the, the games. Um, obviously, they're not one-to-one, -one, um, but they do help fill in the clues of everything. Is So, for instance, William Afton uses a different name um, to hide his identity, and then it's later revealed that he's William Afton. So, I thought that them doing that as him pretending to be the career counselor was fine. Um, I felt like that was kind of a good nod, and I understood why they decided to make that move. Um, obviously, again, I think that he knew who Mike is by the, you know, Mike Schmidt. So, my theory, now stay with me, my theory is that we will see Henry later. I think that what happened is William and Henry, just like in the games, were co-owners, were business partners, all that type of shit. And what ends up happening is Mike is in the, the dark about these murders and about Freddy's because, well, or because Henry doesn't want Mike to know about all of it. And Mike, um, you know, is left in the dark about those things and doesn't even know necessarily maybe what his dad does for work. Um, so, you know, that can kind of explain why he didn't know about all these things. Um, and then what I'm uh, theorizing here, um, just using my game knowledge versus the movie versus my own opinions, is um, after the missing children incident, uh, I think that Henry just kind of told 
William to just fuck off and he didn't want to help him anymore. He didn't want to be part of it. What he did was, you know, un unbelievable. How could he, you know, because even though there was no proof that William did do the missing children incident, um, Henry had a suspicion, just like in the games, you know. So he took his family camping, um, kind of wanted some some peace in mind, kind of just to get away from all of the bullshit that is Freddy's. And I think that William went and kidnapped that kid out of spite. Um, and that's how he knew where they would be is because, you know, maybe they had gone since they were friends at one point in time, they were attached to, you know, they had gone camping there before, or they had talked about it before, or, you know, something along those lines. So that's how he knew where they potentially would be. If he like went to their house and saw they weren't there, he's like, Oh, well, maybe they're camping. Let me take a drive by. Um, because that would then kind of in a sense mirror Henry losing Charlie outside the pizzeria like it happens in the games um, and so this is the way that Char or Henry still loses a child now stay with me let's say hypothetically the families are switched so instead of William having the three children Henry does, and William only has the one, uh, which is Vanessa, but Vanessa doesn't ever die. Maybe she's in the animatronic, but yet she's in the, in the fucking, she bleeds when she gets stabbed, which could be an illusion disc. Um, but also then is at the hospital and is like worked on and like hospitalized. So, I mean, that doesn't really make sense of if she was an animatronic, I guess. Um, so that's interesting to me. But, so, I mean, for them to essentially swip, swap families, you know, where William has only the one kid and Henry has the three versus, you know, the other way around, like it is believed to be in the games, I think that still doesn't make sense because, you know, William had to have had some type of reason and motive as to why he started killing children, why he started, you know, potentially experimenting on them, which obviously the movies could go a whole other fucking way, which would, in my opinion, would be disappointing um, as someone who's very much loves the lore of this series. Um, but I feel like it just, it doesn't make sense. I mean, again, I know that they leave a lot of unanswered questions so that you'll want to see the next two movies, right? Um, but at the same time, like, I wish we were given more, um, just because who knows how long it's going to take before they put out another film, um, and I'm impatient. But, yeah, so his motives are very unclear. Um, I think that Henry changed his name at one point in time, and um, maybe somehow William found out about it, and that's how he knew about Schmidt, or maybe Henry's name in this universe is Schmidt. Um, I feel like there's going to be a connection there. I do feel like we have a lot of questions that need to be at, or answered. So, for one, what potential connection does Mike have to William? What type of motive does William have for killing? And... I need more details on Henry and I need more details on William's kids or I guess just child. I don't know. It just, it leaves a really bad taste in my mouth and leaves me wanting more and just disappointed and unsatisfied. Honestly, I'd give this movie only like a five out of 10 and that's coming from someone who really loves the franchise and really loves the lore and obviously they can't. They can't make things as perfect as we would want them um, in this movie. And obviously it couldn't be a one-to-one -to -one to, for the games because, you know, it wouldn't really make sense for the the movie to have him just be sitting literally in an office. Like, we need more backstory and details and all the things, right? Um, William, the way he died is at least tr almost true, you know, obviously... 
I didn't like that the cupcake for Chica was as active as she was. I thought that was kind of bizarre. Um, but I did like that, he, you know, he was still spring trapped. He still was like pulled away and locked in a room. Uh, and essentially the uh, revengeful spirit is uh, forcing him to be in agony and stay alive and, and all that type of shit. Um, I don't know. I'm very curious to see how things go. Obviously, Vanessa's not dead. Um, so we don't know yet what other connection she potentially could have. Is she brainwashed? Like she is in security breach um, or like the, 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 ch the children's spirit. So I don't know. I'm very curious to uh, also, where's William's wife? Vanessa never once talks about her mom. Um, so there's a lot of questions that are unanswered and I would love to have some more background and details on. I think it's very, very interesting the way that they took. Um, personally, I don't necessarily think it was a good route, but that's just my opinion. Um, leave your opinions down below and let me know what you think of the movie, of the theories, of where they're gonna go with it, how different it was from the games. Um, like this video if you like theories and reviews. Um, don't forget to subscribe. All my socials will be linked down below, including my live links. Um, I, this is not a live video like my other ones, just because uh, this has a lot of theories and spoilers and stuff, and I didn't really want someone to click on the on the stream and, and be jumped into something like that. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I've got for, for today, guys. Uh, till next time.